Hello, it's Darren here in Cramont, Northumberland, in the shed. So it's a rainy day. This time two weeks ago was a bank holiday Monday and it was roasting hot. But obviously it isn't now. It's crap weather. So I can either sit at home, enjoy the warmth of the house, or come out and do some planting. So let's go. As you can see, I've had this bed prepared. Uh, my assistant that's behind the camera has kindly done it. Uh, Grace, 10 years old, she dug all this for me and I just put the bark on, did a fantastic job. Uh, so I've got some poles here that you get normally in the uh, building, sort of industry and all that, where you put the I don't know, mesh fencing, whatever it is. And I bought this off the internet. It was £45, I think it was. Uh, Bill has debris mesh. Uh, three metres by 50. And if you want to know, I'll tell you where it is if you, if you want to comment or whatever. So at the minute, as you can see, I've got it with bark and all that. Uh, people have been asking why do I put bark on, basically uh, to stop the weeds coming through. And also, when it comes to the end of the year, I'll just dig it in. I know it takes a while for the stuff to rot down, but it just gives the soil something else. So over here, I've got some plants to put in. I've got some summer purple broccoli. About 15 of them, and I've got some Savoy cabbage, and they're going to go in here. Uh, There's 15, 15 of each. So, right, so it's simple as because, as you can see, the slightly bent over that's because the pot bound, as you can see, the the roots are coming out, but I haven't had a chance to put them in simply because there's been no beds ready, so it's took us a while to sort them out. It's as simple as come on, Grace, a bit further so they can see us. Put the come on, so it's as simple as just moving there. Digging a hole, preferably keep it in the pot because you want to support the neck to give it a bit more strength, give, make it a bit more sturdy. And as you can see, it's pot bound. It's got some lovely roots on it. Let's put it in. So around it. So you base you basically put that long neck into the ground to support it to give it a bit more strength. So I'll basically just go along until I've got all the 15 in, and I've got some cabbage to put in, some uh, kale, and some various other ones. So come with me. And I'll show you. As you can see, as you can see, I've got this is the kale and the stuff like that. See, this is this is what I've been saying about. Repotting stuff up that has been repotted a cabbage And these ones Were repotted a week beforehand So you can see the difference. That's why I'm always saying about repotting and you'll see on various various videos uh, about repotting stuff because You'll think they're okay. They're not grown, but because you haven't repotted them so that's the reason why that's small. The same as the kale. The kale's small. They're 
turnips at the back there, they've been in, oh, two weeks after the kale and the cabbage. And you can see the difference because I've simply repotted in a bigger pot. Not used any special soil, this is basically the soil for the compost. And where did I get that one from? You know, I can't remember. Uh, so, I've got spinach beet down there. Like I said, all the back's got uh, purple top turnips, white turnips. Uh, cylinder beetroot at the back some of the strawberries that are dug up from the patch as you can see as you can see the strawberries are loving me pile of crop and that's the first massive strawberry that grace behind the camera shall be getting yes and as you can see in here the cabbage, I can't remember the name, but anyway, this is doing great. You've got the kaolettes here, which are doing great. Behind Grace, you've got the scarlet curly kale. You've got, uh, if I can remember, broccoli. Purple cauliflower. And at the back here, you've got the green spiked cauliflower. Uh, when I get time, I'm going to start going obviously back. But as you can see, when I put the polytunnel here, I basically went over all my crap, which I put in a pile. So this is basically the reason why it's taking a little bit longer to do it. As you can see as well, the with it being sheltered in here in a, a nice environment, the raspberries are already flowering. Okay. I, keep to go I need to tidy up. And as you can see in the back here, you've got all the various different plants uh, dahlias, peppers, mammoth uh, leeks, elephant leeks. White Allison, uh, marigolds, tomatoes. And also in here, you've got the tomatoes down here. I think they're alicante. Uh, and uh, melon, uh, cucumber, and an aubergine. Obviously, they're, they're not growing as fast as I want them to grow because of the weather. Because like I said two weeks ago, it was crap weather. No, it wasn't. I mean, two weeks ago it was good weather. I was going to say. Uh, but obviously it's turned, turned worse again. And I've got obviously various things in here which, as I've said, repotting. I need to repot quite a bit of the stuff. Just, I've got uh, lavender in here and sage and just waiting for it to come up. The courgettes, the gold rush courgettes, uh, the back maras, the front gherkins. So I'm just waiting for them to come up. Uh, sunflowers here. Parsnips. Uh, and as it took us two days, Oops. two days to do this bed. Uh, I'll put pictures on the comments and it'll show you what it was like beforehand. So it took us two days to put the, ed the edging on uh, to finish it off and obviously dig it over. And the reason why it took us ages is because as people know, when they get allotment, it's the stuff that's been dumped there, which you can never understand, as Grace will show you. This blue stuff that goes on roofs, that was under the ground about uh, a foot. So I had to dig right down to get it out. So God knows, nails, glass, bricks, flagstones, the whole lot under there. And you can never understand when you take over a plot, you think, why? But I'm getting there. Anyway, that's it from me. Remember, I'm in the shed, YouTube page, if you want to check it out. Happy growing. Bye. Hello there. I'm not the previous video. As you can see, the netting is finished on both frames that I've made. For all the uh, purple broccoli, headed broccoli, a little broccoli that you get. And then you've got January King cabbage and 
the Savoy cabbage. Oh, I don't know what that is actually. That is a Hispy F1 cabbage and just normal kale in there. As you can see, the netting came in, it was one and a half meters, and I was a bit worried because I thought myself what I'd ordered three. But as you can see, the top of them, it's basically a doubler, so it opens up. So it is actually three meters by 50. It was, to me, good bargain. There might be some people out there that says it isn't really, but I thought it was. And it's looking pretty good. Hopefully, we'll keep the pigeons out. I need to get some hooks for the bottom. I've secured it the best I can at the minute. So hopefully, pigeons aren't that intelligent that they can start lifting things up and moving things so they can get inside. I'm hoping it's going to be all right. So any comments that you can see? You can see my little chickens are loving it. So that's me away. Next door's garden, absolutely fantastic. All I can say, it's good feed for the chickens. It's bye from me. Happy growing. See you later.